Hey everybody, Darren Voros here. Today I'm here with Diana and John, and we're gonna be talking all about purchasing underperforming assets using the Burr strategy and being able to use the same capital over and over to be able to build your real estate investing portfolio. I'm so excited that they're here to talk about this strategy that they've been using in Hamilton, Ontario. Before we get into it with Diana and John, if you haven't done so already, you can subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, and please feel free to leave comments and questions below for me. And without further ado, Let's get into it. Diana, John, so great to have you guys here. Thanks for taking some time out of your day to join us. Why don't you give us a bit of an intro on who you are and what you do as real estate investors? Thank you very much for yeah, having it's us. Pleasure, pleasure. Um, so Diana and John, which maybe some of you know, we like to call ourselves Dijon. <laughs> <laughs> nice, I love so it. Our, kids are, our names combined, that's really what it is. We started investing, well, not investing. We started learning um, March 2019, uh, March 2019, we started learning, joined um, the network Key Squire, and yep. from that point on, really just took the time to learn, network, meet people one on one to learn about their experience, to figure out what strategy we wanted to get into. In order to keep growing, um, we focused on buying underperforming properties. Um, put in this one equity, uh, and we love renovations. I love design. It's a big passion of mine. So I get to throw that in the mix um, to increase the value of these properties. And the point is to get that money recycled so that we can buy more and grow. You've acquired 20 doors since March of 2019. So that's a pretty impressive stat and congratulations to you guys. And I'm excited to hear about your latest property. Uh, so why don't we walk through that? If you guys are okay with that, tell us about the, um, I believe it's a four unit building. Yeah. Uh, and uh, why did you choose uh, Hamilton as your market? First of all, we knew eventually, okay, this is uh, something that we'd love to do eventually full time. Um, and so we knew we needed to learn hands on. So we looked for a market that wasn't too far from home. Uh, so we could get boots on the ground. We needed to, but at the same time, looking for a market that had all the right fundamentals. So, you know, population growth, um, diversity of tenant profile, you know, Hamilton has the hospital, university, manufacturing. Um, so knowing that, you know, we could get also the right um, market rents available as well. And so that's why we picked Hamilton. And so our first property was this fourplex, underperforming, um, and again, we had just started. I think we closed that in July 2019 after, you know, three months of learning as much as we could. But at some point, you just got to take action, right? So we did it with the fourplex. In terms of real estate investing, mm -hmm. how would you define underperforming? Underperforming where, you know, you've got it, you've got it at a price, um, knowing that you can do work to it to increase the value. Um, we weren't looking for something that was going to need a whole kind of gut job and whatnot, because this was our first, we didn't, we weren't really comfortable taking that on. Um, but from what we, from what we could see when we first laid eyes on it, I actually didn't lay eyes on it. John had to go in, um, but it was more lipstick renovation. Yeah. So flooring, you know, kitchen, paint. We, we did redo the bathrooms and the tiles. Actually, we kept the footprint. We just changed the tiles and spruced it all up. So underperforming that way. Um, I will say one rookie move lesson learned was don't bring your kids to showings. <laughs> Hilarious, eh? This is, this is how new we were. We uh, brought our kids with us. And the minute uh, we, the tenant opened the door and we saw these cockroaches, it was like, John's like, turn around, get to the car. So... <laughs> We opened up the door to like 45 boxes of cockroach, cockroach boxes, like with traps. So we were, yeah, so we, yeah, we, I had to get the family to turn around. <laughs> so yeah, that's, that's, what, that's the, uh, the entrance. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we entered, we entered into that. Lesson learned. So, yeah. yeah. So let me ask you that question. Where did you, uh, how did you find the property? Where did you, did you find it on MLS? Uh, was it uh, off market? Where, where'd you find it? Yeah, it actually was MLS and our, our agent, our, yeah, realtor brought to our attention. Was it a purpose built, like four unit yeah. building or? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. purpose built, non-conforming, like legal non-conforming. 
um and good like good bones from what we could see yeah it just was you had to see past the scary stuff because like there yeah. was lots of cockroaches some of these tenants these tenants smoked inside so there was nicotine stains on the wall one of the tenants we knew she was going to be getting evicted but her place was just a disaster and actually was quite sad because it was just full of um garbage the tub was full of pots and pans so and she had three kids so that was a bit hard to see that like as parents um we knew though that she was going to be leaving how many tenants did you inherit in the building we knew one was going to be leaving on closing so yes two would have been vacant and we inherited two um again i think because <laughs> we were new at this you know, probably most people inheriting tenants, they, it may seem scary at them. Um, I don't think we realize how much challenges we may have faced uh, with the inherited tenants, but in the end, it worked out. It just was not an easy road. No. Um, I think part of it was there was in the beginning, right? There was some hostility yeah. with the tenants. Um, and <clears throat> we also faced challenges where, like, uh, when a tenant was supposed to leave, you know, she had her son come take over to help her move her stuff, but uh, he wasn't moving the stuff. He was, it was a party house and he was trashing it. So that was hard to witness, but. Tell me about the challenges you had with, with uh, removing the tenants. Cause I think this is something that a lot of people are afraid of getting into real estate investing yeah. for this exact reason. So how did you guys go about the process? Did you have to go to the landlord and tenant board? Like what, what was, what was the process and how did it work? In the end, we went to the landlord tenant board three times. Um, the so the first how we did it was, I mean these these units were not in a good state. Like I don't think that the previous property manager or landlord was a slumlord. Um, and I would even question like, how are you living in these conditions? And so when we first met the tenants and you know we introduced ourselves, we did provide a blank copy, you know, to write down their, their issues, the issues with the property. This is valuable, actually. We just give the, the tenant, here are, here's a piece of paper, got all your issues on here, and we'll, uh, we'll discuss we'll it We'll see after. what we can do, because yeah. we, we stressed out from the onset that our focus is making sure we are providing safe, clean, and maintained homes. Yeah. They would write down their issues, um, and some of them, like, you know, they were even writing mold in the bathroom, and, like, the stuff we needed to do to fix these up, it wasn't like you couldn't live there. To, you couldn't live through these renovations. So, we you know, we had offered cash for keys um, to relocate them, to you know, give them the cash so that they could find another place, not have to live through this and for that inconvenience. Um, both of them did not accept. And one of them, it was more, you know, he was paying well below market value. That tenant had been there for eight years and, you know, his, his, um, reason is like, I'm not going to find another place. Right. And, um, so he said, well, can I live through the renovations? And we said, okay, well, let's, let's try. We asked our con, we told our contractors, we're like, okay, we can try on day one of like, you know, them ripping out the floor. And he's like, I can't deal with this. I can't live through this. And I'm like, you asked for this and we're trying. Um, so regardless, you know, in order to us to finish the renovations, we had to serve um, the N13 form, which is, you know, notice of eviction to, to, to repair a unit. Um, and we had, we were going to get permits, we needed permits for it. You know, we worked on renovating the vacant units um, while the time, four months, you know, until the actual hearing date at the LTV. For one of the units, as we got to the LTV, uh, we went into negotiations and he had asked us if he could um, stay in rent out one of the units that we just completed all brand new brand new you know kitchen flooring I mean, like oh yeah appliances um, we re you know we got it like we we redid the tiles in the bathroom and it, it looked much better and cleaner right so he asked can I go and can, sorry can we go stay there um, we'll pay we'll so they increase their rent because they're getting a much better unit um, while we renovate his. And then he was willing, he had offered to still continue to pay that higher rent when he moved back to his unit, but he was going to get a brand new complete unit and it's night and day. And, you know, it, it all worked out. And when we gave him the keys and he signed the new lease down there, I mean, 
they're just so much happier, right? They're so much happier just even with dealing with them. Um, in the beginning, it was very hard dealing with them. I think they were so used to people not caring yeah, about was. them and their space. Um, so initially, they were very hostile with us. With us, They would swear at us, and we weren't used to having people swear at us. So that was hard to take in initially. Oh, yeah. Um, but they've turned around, they've turned around and they communicate much better to us. I think because we've mm -hmm. set boundaries, they know that we, we care and take pride um, in the spaces that we provide. So in the end, it was a, I mean, a win-win for everybody. So you got your, uh, your two vacant units that were um, ready and you started renovating those. You moved one tenant over once that was finished. And I'm guessing then you renovated the other two units after that. Mm -hmm. um, so now you've got the four renovated units uh are they all now tenanted and and how did you end up making out with the with the building yeah so they're all tenanted and i think another important part of this whole process is like we spent so much time um you know putting these you know putting these beautiful spaces together i think what was important that we didn't want to overlook was then who are the tenants that are going to be in there especially what we had to experience with the inherited ones so we really put in place very a very thorough screening process because we do the property management and you know we're doing this now to to really to learn, um, and so we put a very thorough tenant screening in place and a lot of it is really trying to understand the tenants' um, behavior, lifestyles, and making sure like they're good people too. Um, so John, you know, kind of drills them with some like he has this rapid questionnaire tests that he gives them to to get a sense of well, who they, they are that's I, if they pass the, like if they could answer the first couple of questions then yeah we can see, you know you get the vibe you feel them out so okay let's move on and then you basically want to try to break their character uh, if they if you need to but usually you don't because you, you know they're you know they're a good person at, uh, up front but you know, sometimes you just want to feed your curiosity. So you just, you know, you, you, you try to get them comfortable is what uh, is what I try to do. So, and it's been working. It works. Like our yeah, tenants we have, are great. We have, you know? we have really good tenants. Like, do you know them, some of them off the top of your head that you can find? Uh, on the top menu? of my head would be, um, what is your greatest fear? What makes you angry? What do you do when, uh, what do you do with, what do you do to relax? um and then if if it's if they like yeah and then one question just leads to a conversation <laughs> and then and then you're like okay you know what this guy's good and then when when their spouse or their oh, yeah, when, when their partner because I, I we we screen their partners too because they're living under the same roof so i change the questions up we're just sitting in sometimes so <laughs> I love it. It's like it's like a mix between um, it's like a mix between a private detective and the dating game. Yeah, yeah. Right? exactly. Because like you know, you want to get the you want to hit it off the first shot. It's important because once they're in there, you know what I mean. They're in there. I love that philosophy though, and and you ask really great questions that not a lot of people would be asked on a, on a rental application or in an interview process for a rental application. But I think it's you're right. It tells you a lot about a person. And if yeah. they're like, yeah, yeah, to relax, I love to just, you know, get high and sit on my couch. You're like, okay, well, this might not be the right place. For me. <laughs> Cause some, it's funny, but some people will say stuff like that, right? Like they're yeah, just like- Cause it gets uncomfortable, right? Yeah, yeah, the dirty laundry comes out when the comfort comes in, right? So. Totally, and one of my mentors just said, ask a question and then just shut up and just let them talk. And they will yeah. tell you so much information that you don't- Let them do all the talking, absolutely, right? Yeah, that's great. Can we talk a little bit about numbers on this property? Cause I'd love to hear, um, cause I know the Hamilton market pretty well. I know a lot of people in the area knew it. Uh, they'd be curious. Well, what did you buy the building for? So we bought it for six twenty five, and uh, we spent a hundred and forty three thousand with like cost renovations, legal costs are in there, um, and then it appraised at nine fifty six. So I like to break things down because I think people forget this too. They I like to break it down per unit, right? So you got four units, you're about yeah. one hundred fifty six thousand a unit. Um, and this is what people should be trying to find yes, out in their market, uh, right? Like what is the cost of a unit pre-renovation? And then what is the cost of a unit post-renovation? 
And you kind of gave the N number, which was about 900 and what did you say? 56, 956. 956. So after, you know, um, those units were renovated, they're about 240,000 a unit, mm -hmm. right? But you only spent 140,000 on renovation, right? Mm -hmm. So that's $35,000 a unit. And I think people, when they're asking questions like, how much is it going to cost me to renovate this, this building or whatever, if you break it down per unit and you think about it, okay, we're going to do, you guys did new kitchens and some tile in the bathroom and flooring and paint and all that kind of stuff. You think about, okay, is $35,000 enough to do that? And I think when you break it down like that, it, it actually makes sense. So, you know, if you're, if you're spending a hundred and let's call it, um, what do we say? 155 plus a hundred and plus 35, you're now in for 190. 190,000 per unit and your after repair value is in that 230, 240 range. So there's, there's equ significant equity there, right? Which is a mm -hmm. nice thing to be able to have. Mm -hmm. So you bought for six, uh, 625, you put the 145,000 ish into the reno and then you're refinancing at 956. And what did you able, what were you able to get in terms of a loan to value on your refinance? 80%. So now you're getting a, a check essentially for seven hundred and sixty-five thousand mm -hmm. dollars, and like you said earlier, uh, you're only leaving four thousand dollars in that transaction, which is amazing. That is the Burr strategy to a T, right? Yeah, yeah. And again, like I know it's this is close to perfect, Brett, and that's not very common these days. I understand that in the Hamilton market. Um, but this one worked out. The only thing that people would question there is how much work did you do yourself? So, okay. So we hired a, a, a general contractor. Okay. Um, but, you know, it's funny because when I do the math and I look, because I, I broke down all the costs. And in the, begin, in the beginning, we didn't think we were going to spend this much. We thought $50,000, like way <laughs> off. Okay. Um, we're new, man. We're new. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> um, we were trying to save a bit of money, and but in the end, it didn't really save. Um, but we tried to save money by me going out and buying all the materials and bringing them on site. I loved again because I love the design stuff. I, I I enjoyed actually doing all that. Um, but it was my time, right? It I, it was a lot of a lot of time to do that and yeah. deliver it over there. Um, so. So, I mean, that was the deal. Other than that, we did have the general contractor who kind of ran the show. To be honest with you, in the start, like the very first month, we were, again, naive thinking like, yeah, we'll do the work. Like, you know, after spend a month of doing evenings and weekends there, we're like, and our poor kids, like, we hell, did, this is not feasible. We thought, yeah, we did the demo. We thought that was a big idea. No, I, no <laughs> the demo was good, though, because we got to know the tenants, Well, yeah, too. I had cockroaches and... Oh yeah. Taco shells on my nose and oh. <laughs> um, wasn't worth it. So, there, it wasn't I worth mean, it. after a month, <laughs> <laughs> everyone's like, everyone's gonna watch this and be like, uh, I don't really like this master actually. Yeah. Yeah. It's after good though. This is doing that is like, okay, man, we need to hire somebody, and yeah. you know, so we I. I reached out to the net, I reached out to other investors like for recommendation. So um, we hired um, and they're called NFPA, which like they, they were amazing too, because um, they are also investors themselves. So not only were there our contractors, but actually even just someone to turn to when we had to deal with our tough situations, the tenants, because uh, they they do they do general contracting and they do property management. So they they helped us a lot too oh, yeah. when we got through some hard times. What did you learn from this that you will apply to every job you do from now on? Yeah, I mean, before you start, already have like contractors vetted, you know, before closing, take that time yeah, to have three ready. different quotes, quotes, at least three different quotes ready. We were lucky that the first one we landed was amazing, but that doesn't always work for everybody. Yeah, we got lucky. Um, spend the money to spend the money on the right people to do the job. You know, there are times we're like, oh, let's do it ourselves. But then the time it took away for that from that. Um, and, you know, our motto is do it nice or do it right or do it twice. So we want to make sure if we're going to spend the money, do it, depending on how much it costs, like do it right the first time so you don't have to deal with that issue again.
Talk about the rents because you talked about the value of the building. Yeah. Um, so tell me about what the building was bringing in in rent uh, prior to the renovations and what it's yeah, bringing it. in now. So prior to closing, the rents were like forty nine hundred, and so we've increased them to sixty two eighty now. What's your tenant profile like now that you're dealing in the building? Like, um, yeah, is young, it young professional couples? Yeah. We have, we actually have a, a nurse because we're right by the hospital. So no, we no crackheads. Just <laughs> <laughs> nurses, nurses. <laughs> At least that you know of. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I love this. Uh, I love this investment for you guys. I think it's, uh, there's so many great lessons that you just uh, took everybody through over the last 15, 20 minutes, you know, you know, taking a, an underperforming building, acquiring it, dealing with, you know, evictions, um, getting, you know, tenants moved around in your building, everybody's happier. Uh, you guys were able to increase the value significantly, exit pretty much all your capital so you can repeat this process. Uh, congratulations to you guys on everything that you've done so far, even just as, as the short time you've been investors. Uh, I think you're going to be an inspiration to many people on how you can do it. And I love the fact you also learned that, guess what? Go with your strengths, keep your jobs, keep doing investing, but let other people do what they do best. And I think that's a hugely valuable lesson for many people to learn. Thank you guys so much for taking some time out of your day to join me. Thank you. Um, Thank yeah. you. I, I, I love it. I love, uh, John, I love your questions that you ask your tenants. <laughs> I, I'm going to definitely steal that from you if that's yeah, all right. Yeah, let's talk. Let's talk. Let's do it. <laughs> I got more questions. Let's do it. All right. And I would love to come by your projects when things open up a little bit more. And I'd love to love to see them. I'm investing in Hamilton as well. And we're, we're not sure, far from each other in, in, in Milton and Toronto. So um, thanks again for, for walking us through that. If you guys enjoyed the, the session with Dijon, go ahead and hit the like <laughs> button below. You can also subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, and please feel free to leave comments and questions below for me. You can also follow me on Facebook, Instagram, or check out my website at darrenboros.com. With that, I'll say, guys, thanks so much again for being here. I really do appreciate your time. I know that many people are going to find this video super valuable. So thanks for creating value for my audience. Uh, I wish you the best of success on your real estate investing journey. And I look forward to hopefully at some point meeting you in person and actually getting a yeah. chance to sit down and sure. talk thanks. real estate. So Likewise. thanks guys. Have a wonderful rest of your day and we'll talk to you guys very soon. All right. Take care. Take care. Bye. Bye.